Hello and welcome to another video. So in this in this video we're going to be talking about conditional statements. So with and the reason we're going to be talking about this kind of topic is because this is kind of a segue to the next topic, which is uh, mathematical induction. So let's get right to it. What is a what is a conditional statement? Well, a conditional statement is essentially saying that as a result of something, something else happens. So something happens. So something will result in something else happening. Like so. So something happens and something else happens as a result. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. So all I'm saying is that if we show that something happens, something else will happen as a result of this initial statement. So that might seem a little bit wordy at first, but let's get to a little bit more detail. So the topic we're going to be covering today for conditional statement is called the material conditional. So material conditional. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is defining what a material conditional is. So let me just underline that really quickly. Okay, so this is generally denoted with a right arrow sign, like so. I don't have to close it, I could just do that. So generally this is what a material conditional is. What does that mean? So this one says if something then something else. That seems really confusing for a second. So let me just write this down. So if something, then something else. What does that mean? So I'm saying if a statement happens, then another statement will happen. So in other words, in to, to kind of write this in a more compact way, if P, then Q. So if something called P happens, then something called Q will happen. So another way of kind of writing this uh, in a different way is essentially saying, so another way of writing this is the following. So if P, then Q. So P implies Q. So this is kind of how we write this in a very compact sort of way. So all I'm saying here is that if I have some statement P, I get something Q out. Now, generally in symbolic logic, we tend to use true and false. So for example, if P is true, then Q is true. If P is true, then Q is false, and so on. So as a way to kind of go about this a bit further, let's just make a table. So what happens when statements in true are true or false? So let's get right to it. So here I'm going to make a chart. So one more. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. Okay. So suppose I have statements P and Q. And let's say here I have P implies Q. Now, I have a little Q and a big Q here. That doesn't matter, so that's okay. And there should be one more here, actually. Okay, so suppose I have P is true and Q is true. Obviously, this means that P implies Q is true. So Q is a consequent of the premise P. So just to kind of write that down here, this Q right here is called a consequent. So it's the result of assuming that P is true. So if P happens, then Q happens. So notice I'm saying if P, we're never proving if P happens or not. We're just saying that if P were to happen, then Q happens as a result of this. Okay. 
So let's just kind of go about defining a few more things. So this P right there is usually called the antecedent, or sometimes it's also called the premise. So that's what this P is right there. Okay, so let's go about this a bit more. So if I say P is now true and Q is false, this is now false. How does that work? Well, here I'm saying that the conclusion I get by assuming that my premise is true means that my overall statement is true. That should, uh, sorry, false. So that should, you know, kind of make sense. I'm saying that I get a false conclusion from assuming a true premise, meaning my overall situation is false. Okay, if that doesn't make sense, I will be doing an example which will kind of emphasize how this actually works. Okay, so next one is I'm going to assume my premise is false and my consequent is true. Well, that actually is true. So if that doesn't make sense, again, I will do an example, but let's just talk about this. If I say my consequent is true, but I use a false premise to do this, well, my overall situation is going to be true. Now, this might seem a little bit weird, but this will make much more sense with an example. So I promise we'll get to that in a second. And the last one is if both of these are false. Well, that will imply that, of course, that's true. Okay, so let's talk about this for a second. If I'm saying my original premise is false, and my consequent is false, then those two together mean that my overall statement as a whole is true. And that should, you know, make sense, of course, because if I'm saying that my consequent, like my conclusion, is a result that comes from a false premise, and the result I get is a false consequence, well, both these are in agreement with you with each other. So that means that my overall statement as a whole is, well, true. Okay, now again, if this makes sense, I'm going to do an example right now. So let's talk about this. Here, I'm going to say that P is that it rains. And here, I'm going to say that Q is I bring an umbrella. So I bring an umbrella. Okay, so let's go through this. So I'm going to be proving each of these statements one at a time. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, let's take a look at the first one. The statement I'm saying is every time it rains. So every time it rains. I will bring an umbrella. So I bring an umbrella. So this is the statement I'm saying. I'm saying that every time it rains, I will always bring an umbrella. Okay. Now keep in mind it says every time it rains. We'll keep that in mind for a bit later. Okay. So statement one. Well, in statement one, it says both, both statements are true. So here I'm saying it rains. And of course, I'm also saying I bring an umbrella. Okay, well, that's cool. That's exactly what my original statement is. So yes, in this situation, I have that P implies Q is true. Cool, so that wasn't very hard. Okay, so the second statement says that if it rains, but this time I don't bring an umbrella, so I do not bring an umbrella. Okay, so in this situation we get that P implies Q, is false. 
because my original statement was that every time it rains, I bring an umbrella. So here it's raining, but I'm not bringing an umbrella. So my overall conclusion is that, well, P doesn't imply Q, so it's false. Okay, the next one is very interesting. Here I'm saying, so for your reference, in this one, P was false and Q was true. So in this situation, it does not rain. So it doesn't rain here, but I bring an umbrella. Okay. Okay, so in this situation, I am asserting that P implies Q is true. Well, why is that? Well, remember the quote, the statement said every time it rains. I never once said what happens when it doesn't rain. If it doesn't rain, it's my choice whether or not to bring an umbrella or not. I just said that every time it rains, I have to bring an umbrella. But if it doesn't rain, it's my choice whether or not to bring an umbrella. That doesn't matter. I could have, for example, said, oh, it's not raining, but the clouds look really cloudy. So it might be a good idea to bring an umbrella. So that's kind of the idea with this. The statement only propose what happens when you say it rains. But if it doesn't rain, it's my choice whether to bring an umbrella or not. So in this situation, I haven't said a false statement yet. So this is still true. So in this situation, the last one kind of works out in a similar way. So here it does not rain. And I do not bring an umbrella. So I do not bring an umbrella. So in this situation, we have that P implies Q is also true and it's kind of the same reasoning it doesn't rain so for example i could have seen that oh the clouds look extremely sunny and it's and it doesn't look like it's gonna rain anytime soon so i'm just not gonna bring an umbrella so it's the same idea here every time it rains i'm gonna bring an umbrella but if it doesn't rain, it's my choice whether to bring it or not. I don't have to bring an umbrella if I don't want to. I mean, if it rains, that's shame on me. I'll just get wet. But if it doesn't rain, I don't have to bring an umbrella. So as a result, these two statements are still true. I haven't ever seen a false statement yet. Okay, hopefully that kind of makes sense as to why conditional statements work the way they do. Okay, let's do one more example just to kind of drive home the point. So in this example, I'm gonna let P be my kid gets an A on an exam, gets an A on an exam. And this one, the next one, so Q, is that I will buy my kid a car. Okay, so the statement is if now no, notice in these all these questions, the statement is always if something happens, then a consequence happens, which of course is good and bad. So in this case, it was kind of bad, I guess. And this one, there's a good consequence. So there is no negative, con there is not necessarily a negative connotation. So if my kid gets a hundred, or sorry, an A, gets an A on an exam. In this situation, we will get that if my kid gets an A on exam, then I will buy a car for my kid. So I will buy my kid a car. Okay, so once again, we're gonna just copy paste the true table over. So we have a, so we have our little reference. So let me just copy and paste this over. Okay. 
and there we go okay so let me just cover that up a little bit okay so let's talk about what happens with these situations so once again i hope this makes sense so in this situation we have if my kid gets an e on an exam i will buy them a car okay so in the first situation we have that my kid gets an a so p is true so gets a and the second statement is buys car okay this is obviously true so if my kid gets an a i will buy them a car so together yes this implies that we get p so in this situation of course we get p implies q so yes this is true okay so the next one so in this situation my kid gets an a but i don't buy my car that's really rude oh man that's sad you, they gotta be an alpha and a by like one percent or something oh that's awful <laughs> anyways so in this situation we get we do not buy a car not buying car jerk no, i'm kidding <laughs> anyways so in this situation not buying car so of course in this situation we get p implies q is false okay so remember my original statement was that every time my kid gets an a on an exam i will buy him a car or buy him a car rather but of course in the second situation this isn't true anymore so you know this is false okay so the next one is does not get an a so i'm just gonna write that as no a but i buy a car anyway that's really nice of the uh, that's really nice of the father or the mother so buys car okay so in this situation uh the the kid doesn't get an a but um they buy a car anyway so in this situation well this is still true because i only mentioned that if my kid gets an a i will buy my kid a car but I never see what would happen if my kid didn't get an A. It's my choice. So if my kid didn't get an A, I could buy them a car anyway, but I could also not buy them a car. It's up to me. So as a result, in this case, we have P, P implies Q is still true. So I still kind of held up my part of the deal. So yeah, sure, my kid didn't get an A, but I'm still going to buy them a car. I only say that if my kid got an A, then or then I would buy them my car. Then I would buy them a car. But if they didn't get an A, I never say what would happen. I only say what would happen if my kid got an A. So if my kid didn't get an A, well, it's my choice now. So as a result, the last thing, it's very similar. So if my kid got an A, I could just be like, oh, you didn't buy, you didn't get an A. I'm not gonna buy a car. So not buying car. So in this situation, we have P implies Q is still true. So yeah, you didn't get an A, so I'm not going to buy you a car. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's my choice. So you didn't get an A, so I'm not going to buy you a car. So the same thing happens with statement 3. If you didn't get an A, it's my choice. I didn't say what would happen if you didn't get an A. I only say what would happen if you got an A. So if you don't get an A, it's my choice. I can give you a car or I can not give you a car. It's completely up to me. So yeah, that basically kind of explains the gist of how conditional statements work. So a conditional statement is essentially just saying, okay, if something happens, then something else happens as a consequence. But if it doesn't happen, well, I don't know. The con the conclusion could happen or it could not happen. It's essentially a choice or it's something that might happen regardless. So in other words, what I'm saying is that this second choice is not influenced by the first choice in any way. The only way that it's influenced is if the 
first statement is true and the second statement is false. Only then is that overall statement kind of false. But essentially the second choice is independent of the first one. It doesn't matter. So what I'm saying is once again, just to really kind of drill this into your head, is the fact that if the first premise happens or not doesn't influence if the second part will happen or not. Another a good kind of analogy to this, a good kind of analogy analogy to this is a, basically a promise. So I can always kind of make a promise to a friend, but if I break that promise, my friend might still try to keep might still try to keep that promise no matter what. It's up to him. But the fact but the fact he keeps that promise has nothing to do with the fact that I kept that promise or not. If I break a promise, my friend has the choice to make keep making that promise or not. It's up to him. So it doesn't actually matter. So it's kind of like a similar sort of analogy. So for example, here, the promise I make as my premise has nothing to do with the consequent or the promise my friend makes. If I break that first promise, my friend can still choose to keep his promise. It doesn't matter. That's his choice or her choice. So it doesn't really matter as a result. So in this situation, conditional statements don't necessarily say anything about the premise. So the premise is independent from the consequent. Yes, it's true that I can use the consequent to get an idea of the premise, but I don't... So I could use the consequent to get an idea of the premise, but the premise itself is not reliant on the consequent. It doesn't make sense to kind of do that. Okay, so hopefully that made a lot of sense. If it didn't, let's go. You can go over these examples one more time. And if you have any other questions, just let me know in the comments. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe if this video helped you. And I will see you in the next video where we talk about mathematical induction. See you then.